Oh, hi there, I'm Black Bright. I'm going to do a short video before my show. Um, and yeah, if you want to look at my listening to my show, I'm on the radio every Friday on Lovers Rock Radio, but it's not for lovers. Um, www.loversrockradio.com. And since today is Friday, I'm letting you know. Anyway, putting that aside, um, I, I was reading this um, booklet. It came out by... The re returning residents to safety have put out, it's been put out by the Jamaican Association for the resettlement of returning residents. And what stuck out at me is that they said in that booklet that those who are, who are being deported, um, whether it's voluntary or non-voluntary, must make sure that they let people know what time they're arriving, what time the plane's coming in, and blah, blah, blah. I don't think these people have got their head screwed on right. I mean, don't they realise that even though there's not supposed to be no rule, a lot of these people do not know when they are being deported. So how the hell can they tell anyone? A lot of them didn't even know they were going to be deported. Some people have been picked up off of the street, taken straight to the detention centre or straight to, um, yeah, set, let's call it detention centre. But what I really mean is a holding cell where an immigration officer is there waiting. They then find out that they might have overstayed. They are then sent to the detention centre. A lot of them don't have, you need money to get an immigration lawyer. A lot of them don't have it. So then what happens is they're stuck in there. They're told three days or oh, you're going to be deported any time after this. They don't have an opportunity to notify anyone. So how the hell are they going to be able to tell anyone what time they're going to come on a plane? A lot of these planes are chartered. They, you know, people don't know what time they're leaving. And that's the way it is. It's not an organised and fair s system over here. It's supposed to be just. It, it looks very orderly from the outside. And I'm sure when they're talking to the heads of state, they're making it look like everything's done properly. But these, um, a lot of these detention centres are run by biased people who have got chips on their shoulders, who've got issues, who've got problems, who've got something to prove who don't like black people, they've got all different kinds of issues. And this is where a majority of the people are being placed. And then they're put on a plane in chains and sent to whether it's Jamaica, um, Trinidad, Barbados, Guyana, Africa, wherever it is, Asia, wherever it is. They're put in chains, waste of things, you know, things that make them look like damn criminals. Nobody can tell the difference between an overstayer and a criminal when, they, when they're when they deporting them. And when they're getting off the plane, what the people on the other side see are criminals, bad criminals, because can you imagine people chains on their feet and this big waistband thing that's supposed to hold them down? Anybody would think that they were menacing. And this is how they are dropped off into respective countries. So don't talk about they must tell their family members what plane they're coming on and what time as though this is an orderly thing when it's not. And one of the things that were in that booklet was if you're employing someone, make sure you give them background checks. I mean, please, even those people who are self-deporting don't really have a choice. They're made to self-deport and depending on their circumstances, they're not going to be in a position to be employing anyone. So it's all made up to look very hunky-dory, very cosy, very proper. And as you know, there's many, um, there's many people who know how to word things to make it look as though this is the way things go. I mean, we listen to the politicians. And they make everything sound so um, proper and organised. And we know it's a load of crap underneath it. So it's the same thing. When Jamaican heads of state are writing these documents and making it look like, oh, they've done something because they've got funding to look after people who are going back. When, when these people go back, they, they're treated with disdain. They're treated, you know, they're treated like, oh, God, you know, look at them. Just to think these people in England, they're scorned. 
And then, ah, oh, it's just so, so bad. It, it really is bad because these people that they're sending back are often hard-working people. I'm talking about the more senior ones. And maybe some of the young ones um, have been in trouble. I, I don't know. I'm not really thinking about the young ones so much. I'm talking about the elderly and the senior people who have worked all their lives, who've paid national insurance, who've paid taxes. And because of an oversight or because they were unaware that the rules have changed are now being deported and treated like criminals. I'm not surprised um, some of them have died. I'm not surprised the strain and the stress of working in a country all your life, not even having a mortgage by the time you've reached a certain um, age and then having all of that stripped away from you. Some of them are here homeless. People who've been here from the 30s and 40s, they, they're homeless being treated like crap and a lot of people don't even know that that's what's happened and you see with um, England it's not like Jamaica where everybody's close-knit and you know what the neighbour is doing I know that okay my I have a habit with my daughter that I have to speak to her maybe once a week and then with WhatsApp you can see whether or not there are um, picking up messages and you can tell that way that somebody is alive and well and in you know in sync with everybody else but for the elderly people who are not that way inclined who are not who are not using whatsapp and stuff they can disappear off the face of the earth and nobody knows unless they have a close-knit family i mean my mother is so blessed and fortunate she i don't think a day goes by when she doesn't have visitors but not everybody is that fortunate You've got people whose wives have died or whose husbands have died and they're left in the house by themselves and they're just soldiering on. They're going out to work, they're paying their bills and they're doing whatever they need to do. Some of them, for whatever reason, sometimes young people, if, if you speak to them too tough, they, they discard you. So nobody knows what's happening to a lot of people. So, and they might say, oh, well, somebody knows what's going on. They don't. You know, sometimes you, you don't even know your next door neighbour. Sometimes my daughter, my other daughter doesn't call me for weeks until, you know, until something's going on. And she, and, but the thing is, I take it for granted that she's OK and she probably takes it for granted I'm OK. But the fact of the matter is that happens and somebody's not OK. Somebody could be in one of those detention centres and nobody knows and there's nobody to say, oh, what's happened to Mr Brown? I haven't seen him for quite a while. So please don't be too hard on people who are deported or who they claim self-deport because self-deport is just another word for blackmail. That's just another word for it. Nobody is self-deporting. They just feel as though they haven't got a choice and that's it. Anyway, I've gone on long enough. Ciao for now. Bye bye.